in the midnight, Mr. Joe Morgan, is waiting for Andrew, walking short steps between Andrew's closed surgery, and the house. As Andrew reached, Morgan's face expressed relief. Eh, doctor. I'm glad to see you. I've been back and forward here this last hour. My wife needs you, before time. Mr. Joe Morgan, is a driller. He is the husband of, Mrs. Susan Morgan. They are expecting their first child, after nearly 20 years of their marriage. Andrew Manchin, has just begun his medical practice. He is returning to his house, from a disappointing evening with Christine, the girl he loves. He is in bad mood. Just wait a bit. He went into his house for his bag. They both went, for number 12, Plana Terrace. The night air was cool and deep, with quiet mystery. Andrew knew, that this night would influence his whole future in Blanelli, because, it was his first case. I will not come in, his voice showed signs of strain. But, man, I know you will do well for us. Inside, a narrow stair led to a small bedroom, clean, but poorly furnished, and lit only by an oil lamp. In the room, there is Mrs. Morgan's mother, and a midwife, who waited beside the patient, Mrs. Morgan. Midwife means, nurse. Let me make a cup of tea for you, doctor. I think, this old woman realized, that there must be a period of waiting. She is afraid that I would leave, saying I'd return later. That's why she asked me tea. Don't worry, mother. I'll not run away. Down in the kitchen, he drank the tea which she gave him. As he was anxious, because of his own matters, he knew he could not snatch even an hour's sleep, if he went home. Also, he knew, that the case here would demand his attention. That's why he waited there, instead of going home. An hour later, he went upstairs again, noticed the progress, came down once more, sat by the kitchen fire. It was calm, except for the sound of the burning coal, and the slow tick-tock of the wall clock. But there was another sound, the beat of Mr. Morgan's footsteps, as he walked out of stress, in the street outside. The old woman opposite him, sat in her black dress, quite motionless, her eyes alive, examining his face. His thoughts were heavy, confused. He was still in his own thoughts, about Christine. The episode he had seen at Cardiff Station, still disturbed him. He thought of Bramwell, who was foolishly devoted to his wife. But she cheated him. Also, he thought of Edward Page, who was bound to his quarrelsome wife, named Bloodwen. He thought of Denny, who was living unhappily, apart from his wife. All these marriages, were dismal failures. But, he wanted to consider marriage, as a happy story, that is why he was considering it, with the image of Christine in his mind. So, he was confused. There was a conflict, between his doubting mind, and his overflowing heart. He let his chin, sink upon his chest, stretched out his legs, and stared into the fire. He remained like this so long. Susan said, not to give her the chloroform, if it would harm the baby. It will not do any harm. They will be alright. From the bedroom, the nurse called Andrew. Andrew glanced at the clock. It showed half past three. Andrew rose, and went up to the bedroom. An hour elapsed. It was a long, harsh struggle. Then, the child was born, lifeless. As he saw the face of the child, his face filled with horror. On one hand, he wanted to attempt to revive the child, but on the other hand, he had a duty towards the child's mother, who was herself in a desperate state. The dilemma, meaning confusion, between whom to save first, was so urgent, that he did not solve it consciously. Without thinking, he gave the child to the nurse, and turned his attention to Susan Morgan. She was laying almost pulseless. Andrew smashed the glass ampoule, filled the medicine in the syringe, and injected. Then, he threw down the syringe, and tried hard to restore the senses of the woman. After a few moments of effort, the woman's heart strengthened. Now, Andrew thought, he could safely leave her, and focus on the child. Where's the child? The nurse had placed the child under the bed. Andrew knelt down, and pulled the child, 
who was amongst newspapers, under the bed. His warm body, was white and soft as tallow. Tallow means, the hard fat of animals. The spinal cord, lay like a broken stem. The skin was smooth. The head lolled on the thin neck. The limbs looked, as if they were boneless. The whiteness meant only one thing, asphyxia, pallida. It is a situation, caused by lack of oxygen, and excess of carbon dioxide in the blood, which leads to unconsciousness, pallidness of skin, suffocation etc. Andrew's mind ran to a case, he once had seen in the Samaritan. He thought of the treatment, that had been used. What treatment did he use? Gave me hot water and cold water. And basins too. Quick, quick. But, doctor. Quick! Andrew took a blanket, laid the child upon it, and began this special method of respiration. The nurse gave him the basins, the ewer, the big iron kettle. Andrew poured cold water into one basin, and in the other, he mixed water as hot as his hand could bear. Then, he hurried the child, between both the basins. Once into the icy water, then into the hot water. Fifteen minutes passed. Sweat was now running into Andrew's eyes, blinding him. His breath became pantingly. But no breath came from the body of the child. A run desperate sense of defeat pressed on him. The nurse was watching him with severe anxiety, pressed back against the wall, her hands pressed on her throat. The old woman was staring on Drew. He remembered the old woman's longing for a grandchild, as great as had been her daughter's longing for this child. For mercy's sake, doctor. It's born dead. Andrew ignored her. Having worked hard in vain, for half an hour, he still persisted in one last effort. With a rough towel, he rubbed the child, crushed and released the little chest, with both his hands, trying to get breath into that limp body. And then, as by a miracle, the chest, gave a heave, another, and another. The sense of life, springing under his fingers, after all that striving, was so beautiful, that it almost made Andrew unconscious. He redoubled his efforts. The child was breathing now, deeper and deeper. A bubble of mucus, came from one tiny nostril, a joyful luminous bubble. The limbs were no longer boneless. The head no longer lolled on the neck. The white skin was turning pink. Then, came the child's cry. Dear Father in Heaven, it's come, it's come alive. Andrew handed her the child. He felt weak and dazed. Around him, the room laid in a shuddering litter. Blankets, towels, basins, instruments, the syringe, the ewer knocked over, the kettle on the side. On the bed, the child's mother, Mrs. Susan was still laying, as the effect of the anesthetic was still there. The old woman, stood against the wall. Her hands were together, her lips moved without sound. She was praying. Andrew unfolded his sleeves, and wore his jacket. I'll fetch my bag later, nurse. He went downstairs, through the kitchen into the scullery, a room for washing dishes. He took a long drink of water. Outside, he found Joe on the pavement. All right, Joe. Both all right. Now, it was quite light. Nearly five o'clock. Some miners were already in the streets, moving out after their night shift. As Andrew walked with them, his footfalls echoing with the others, he kept thinking, I've done something. Oh, God. I've done something real at last. <laughs>